I suppose it shouldn't be a surprise, but let me tell you what's up this next second half of the Joe Walsh Show. First up, an explosive new story, an investigative report. The Obama administration actually knowingly gave money, a lot of money, to a known Muslim terror group. Then my take on this effort to impeach Rod Rosenstein. And as always, we close with our gallery of the stupid. This should not be surprising. A pretty explosive report, though, out that shows and proves the Obama administration actually gave money to a Muslim terror group uh, when they knew it was a Muslim terror group. Let's discuss this and a bunch of other things with our friend Robert Sponsor with Jihad Watch. Robert, I appreciate you coming back on so soon. Thank you, my friend. This shouldn't surprise us. Uh, and, no, but no. for our listeners, I, 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 and I, again, you and I can, can laugh because, again, it shouldn't surprise us. But $200,000 or so the Obama administration gave to a known al-Qaeda affiliate, what, what, what do we know? Well, we know that what they were trying to do was win over allies that they thought they could leverage and that was an incredibly naive and wrong-headed thing to begin with. What really surprises me about this story is, as you say, Joe, that anybody is surprised about it, because we already know yeah. that the Obama administration funded al-Qaeda groups. They claimed they were moderates, the Free Syrian Front and others in Syria against ISIS and against Assad. These people were never moderates. A lot of those weapons that we gave them ended up in the hands of ISIS. And this was known, I remember back in 2013, the much maligned and wrongly accused, I think, uh, uh, Fl Michael Flynn, he actually testified at that time that the Obama administration was knowingly giving aid to Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda groups, and nobody seemed to care. And, well, I guess it's a good thing so that people are caring. Robert, you're right. So this al-Qaeda affiliate in the Sudan, uh, the Obama administration gives a couple hundred thousand dollars to, a decade after our own Treasury Department designated it as a known terror group. That can't be an accident or a mistake, right? Oh, no, absolutely not. It's very clear that Obama apparently either actively supported these people, or if you want to put the best face on it possible, then the only other explanation is that he thought if they became beholden to the United States, that they would moderate their stance toward the United States. He did seem to pursue the strategy with Iran as well, that if you give the jihadis, give Islamic supremacists and terrorists everything they want, well, then they won't be mad at us anymore. So, Robert, a, a year or two now removed from the Obama administration, thank God, how, how do we explain, how do you explain uh, Obama's eight-year, as you said, cozy relationship with CARE, with the Muslim Brotherhood, virtually every move they made in the Middle East was to favor some Muslim dictator or group, often at the expense of Israel. Uh, again, I don't want to sound naive. I just love to ask you these questions. What explains that that posture of the of Obama and his team? I do think that they believed what Fareed Zakaria writes in his book, The Post-American World. You remember that book? And you remember that Obama yeah. was seen during the 2008 campaign reading it avidly. And he was going from plane to plane and holding his place in the book. And it was clear that this was something that was very important to him. And that book says that if America is weakened politically, militarily, and economically, then there will be peace in the world because there won't be this one superpower that everybody's taking shots at. I think that that is the strategy that the Obama administration pursued, particularly in regard to aiding the Muslim Brotherhood and aiding Islamic regimes. His, his, his record is absolutely consistent. Wherever there were jihadis or Islamic supremacist groups that were pro-Sharia, he aided them. And whenever there were, were actual protests against a Sharia regime, like in Iran, then he did not support them. And so it does seem like we can only conclude that he was in favor of Sharia regimes, that he thinks that Islam is great 
for individuals and societies, which is not to get into the whole question of whether he himself was a Muslim or not, or or, or ever or uh, or is now or ever was. But clearly, this is just extrapolating from his record, and I think that it was a deliberate strategy, actually, to empower America's enemies, so as to, as he put it, spread the wealth around in a different context. Robert, I agree with everything you just said, and, and I, I can't wait for someone to write that book in another 5, 10, 15, or 20 years. It is absolutely stunning that for eight years we had a guy in the White House who sided with and felt close to and related to all of these Islam groups, many of whom uh, are, are, are actual enemies of this very country. Yeah. Absolutely. Look, the definition of treason is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. If Barack Obama is not a traitor by that definition, then it has no meaning at all. Everybody's all upset about the president's press conference with Putin. But look, that nothing compared to giving aid to al Qaeda in Sudan, giving aid to al Qaeda in Syria, giving billions of dollars to the Iranian regime. If that's not aid and comfort to the enemy, I don't know what is. So then, Robert, all of these groups, the Muslim Brotherhood, Iran, CARE, all of these groups, with Obama gone now and Trump in the White House, do they understand that it's, it's a different regime here now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is one of the reasons why they are so ferociously attacking President Trump, trying to uh, impugn him in every way they can calling the travel ban on seven countries from that are most of whom are jihad, which are jihadi hotspots and calling it a Muslim ban trying to portray it as this racist thing and uh, care uh, is opposing pretty much every counter terror measure that has ever been proposed or implemented not just during the Trump administration but for long before that they're very afraid now that he's going to De uh, declare the Muslim Brotherhood a terror group. And with CARE tied to the Muslim Brotherhood, that's going to reflect very poorly on them and may open the way for CARE to be prosecuted, which is long overdue. Hey, Robert, on Iran, how do you see this playing out now with President Trump and his very tough stance, I think the appropriate stance toward Iran? How do you see this playing out? How will Iran react? I think they're going to back down. And I base that on the fact that this is a regime that understands only strength and weakness. And they see that the president is not following the appeasement policies of the previous administration. I think they're going to talk tough for a while and then quietly come around because their regime is deeply threatened now. And they know that uh, it could very easily fall. And if they go too hard against Trump, that might be the end of it. Yeah. Boy, Robert, I, you are so spot on tonight. You're, you talk about treasonous behavior. This, this is just one more piece of what Obama did for eight years. Robert Spencer, Jihad Watch. Robert, always enjoy it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Joe. My take on the impeachment of Rod Rosenstein coming up next.